Hey out there in Internet's land, it's your friendly neighborhood Francis7 here with another of our GMAX boot camp sort of tips on how to model things for there.com. Uh, in today's activity, we're going to be texturing an object. Sorry, I just wanted to make it sound like I just added that in sort of at, at random. But we are going to be texturing an object. Now this is more advanced texturing than in the basic uh, GMAX boot camp. So we're going to learn how to put multiple textures on an object and we're going to learn how to sort of manipulate them in a fancy way sort of at the end. So pretty simple stuff at first, then it's going to get a little harder. All right, off we go. All right, let's, uh, let's go ahead and get started. First thing we're going to do is create a... Uh, a box and uh, it's over on the right hand side and we'll click on box we'll go to the center of our screen we're gonna draw a little box right here and we're gonna make the size of this box uh, one by one by one where it says length width and height over here just to make a nice simple box uh, we could use the uh, four-sided move arrow up here and uh, then we can go down to the bottom and we can put the zero of this out so we can show where it's going to go, you know, where the X, Y, and Z coordinates. Uh, we'll just make that zero. That puts it in the center of the screen, and that makes it handy. Of course, you have to click on the third box to get to it. Now, the big problem is, is it's really too small to see this little box on the screen and work with it. So we're going to use another box down here, which is called uh, Zoom Extents. It's this far one over here on the right with, like, double blue and double windows. And what that's going to do is it's going to zoom it all the way in. Unfortunately, it tends to zoom in on objects this small all the way. There's a little magnifying glass you can take and zoom out a little bit so you can see what you're doing. Uh, that might be a good idea so that we can get that all adjusted. Okay, so now we've got our box. There's also a little uh, three-wheeled kind of uh, three-axis kind of rotational box. I'm sure it has a name. If I point at it, it'll tell me, Arc Rotate! Yes, there we go. So we can rotate our box a little bit, and then we can see it. Uh, the next thing we're going to do is we're going to right-click on our box, and we're going to select Convert to Editable Mesh. So it's right-click, convert to and then you're always going to want to do editable mesh and we're going to be doing this like hundreds of times during the day and okay so we've right clicked on the object and we converted it to an editable mesh and now we're ready to start uh, putting textures on our object so we go over to the modifier list where we pull down UVW map now it's once again it's the little triangle up at the top and da -da 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 -da, UVW map so that's the one we want and that basically puts this little uh, blank uh, sort of line that you can see across this is in this case it's going across so basically in this little picture here uh, the orange lot is where the, the, the surface is going to be projected onto now I've got three little textures in here so we can put three textures on this box and you can't just drag it and drop it anywhere in the box it has to be somewhere in the projected orange area so in this case it's basically taking uh, the texture that I've dragged and dropped on here and it's it's sort of stretched it out so this pixel is being this pixel is being stretched out all the way down this direction and this pixel right here along the top row here is being stretched out all the way along this projection and uh, basically we're going to need to modify that a little bit in a minute to put another texture on it but I think that's pretty good for right now um, up over here is uh, what do you call this thing the material navigator ooh the navigate the rivers of the great material continuum. I think that was one of the Ferengi sayings. One of the things I always like to do with my first texture, aside from naming it number one, since this has a one on it, I'm going to name it one, is to put my own name in it. And the reason you want to put your own name, uh, avatar name, in this little box is that basically when you go to load a texture, this model is obviously made by you. Now, if, if you give this model away to somebody else to have them make it, it's going to have your name on it. If somebody steals it out of the object folder, it's going to have your name on it. Uh, something else to think about right here is a two-sided box. Right now, the, the object is only painted on the outside of the box. If we were actually to zoom in on this box and look at it, the inside wouldn't show anything. Um, if you're building a knickknack, you don't want to check two-sided. If you're building something that has like walls and you're going to be going inside of an object, then two-sided texture is probably a good idea. Uh, not a good idea for knickknacks because it makes everybody's machines run slower. It has to render the, 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 the inside of the object as well as the outside. If you can only see the outside of the object, why bother? So uh, that, use that sparingly. Uh, okay, so there we go. We got that uh, done, and now we're ready to add another texture, and I just tend to, tend to convert to editable mesh. I grab uh, over here on the right-hand side uh, the selection. This is going to be uh, not a polygon, because that would be the triangle next to it, but uh, a face. You could actually select each triangle that makes up this square and texture it separately if you wanted to. In this case, I'm just adding my textures in. Later, I could 
I could add them. I've got this object. Here's my second texture. I drag it over here. Boom. There's my second texture. Uh, I might want to go up here and change the name of that second texture. Oh, and you're also going to start to see it making uh, these little multi-textures is what they're called, multi-materials. In this case, th this doesn't actually have its own material. If we deleted this cube, this, this would be gone from the model. Uh, I know that's confusing, but it may help you at some point. Uh, we'll just name this one 2, since it happens to have a number 2 on it, but you probably want to give your textures better names, because when you go into the previewer to load the textures, they don't actually go with the models. So if you don't have names representative of that, could be kind of confusing. Once again, you get the options of making it two-sided or not. I mean, you can have some of your textures be two-sided. You can have some of them not. Probably not useful when you're building a knickknack. Uh, next thing to do is, uh, let's convert it to edible mesh again. We'll grab this side and we'll go UVW map again and that will bring us to the choices now right now it's being stretched out over this uh, this line uh, and basically we need to go ahead and change it so it's not so there's a variety of different things you can try over here on the right are the alignment whether it's aligned to the X Y or Z axis we can try that first let's try X and then it makes this horrible mess and then there's this little button over here called fit so we say fit, and that should make it fit one time in the side. That's pretty good. It's kind of facing the wrong way. I'd kind of like it to go right side up. We can fix that later. Let's go ahead and right click over here, convert to edible mesh, get another face, and let's make this face of the cube a third. Okay, so here we go again. So now I'm going to grab my third texture, and I'm going to grab my third texture, drag it down here, and oh, I made a mistake. You can't go control Z out here because that's actually in the window. You have to go back in here, go edit, uh, undo. Yeah, let's go edit, undo again, undo, okay, drag, undo, drag, let me convert again, I, I blew it, I didn't have the one side selected when I grabbed this thing, that's my fault, because I clicked somewhere else, there we go, now I've got the third texture on there, and as you can see, it's only the red pixel at the bottom is being shown, so let's just convert to edible mesh again, this is kind of a cheap way of doing this, uh, I got the wrong side, I want the right side, there we go, that's good, and UVW map here, Boom, there we go. And once again, I'm going to try X and fit, and that doesn't really work right because it's got the line down the center. We really want it to be flat. So let's try Y. Y is the correct one. Uh, y, because we like you. Um, also, here is another tip that is, is really going to help you guys uh, out a bit. Let me zoom in just a little bit more so you can see this. Over here on the right, um, let's talk about how many times in tiling textures. If you're familiar with a lot of pro programs, you can say how many times it appears on uh, on a particular side. So let's say we want this picture to appear uh, like four times on each side. So there's four and four. So now we have uh, three rows of four rows of four although they have a number three on them that is just confusing as I'll get out maybe we want to have one by one another thing you're gonna notice is when you're modeling in here uh, it, it, and, oh, by the way, uh, this particular one down here in the bottom right-hand corner, this one zooms in on whichever pane you happen to have zoomed in on. So, for example, I was working in this particular panel over here. So if I click this tool down here, which is called Minimize Maximize Toggle, it just makes this one fill the whole screen, which makes life a little bit easier. Uh, the point I'm trying to make here, though, right now, is this particular screen, let me... I guess I still got it. Uh, right now, now it, 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 they have a tendency in the, their models when it exports this model. See how it's nice and yellow at the top and nice and red at the bottom? But it has a tendency when you export this particular model uh, to sort of be about a pixel off. The, the way the textures are mapped isn't quite right. So when it exports, it sort of does some rounding, I guess, and next thing it doesn't kind of work. So here's what I always do. If you want your textures and you have like one color at the bottom, one color at the top, and etc on the sides and you and you don't really want it to spill a little bit I just go to length over here where it says length and width and I click once up on each one and as you can see it makes it just slightly bigger and that will take care of the problem at the top of the bleed through so just one little click each and those textures are going to be a heck of a lot better and that's going to save you hours and hours of fiddling with your textures in there because I painted it wrong and you don't see it in here you'll see it in the previewer Okay, so now I've got my object, and let's say we want to do something else, like this number two over here. Okay, so the next bit we're going to do is we're going to do something a little fancier. This isn't required or necessary. You can always just rotate these textures in your art program. But let's say, for example, this particular side over here where we have the number two, and we want it rotated a different way. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to go to the little uh, pull-down menu again, and we are going to select, select, select unwrap, UVW. <laughs> ay, ay, ay. Oops. 
un oh okay so I've selected it and then there's there's some choices I can make for example I can edit it so under parameters I'll click edit and this will bring up a, a texture oh that's the wrong one oh darn is that gonna affect all sides of this no it's just the one side okay so it's just using the wrong texture so let's say that I wanted to rotate this particular thing here's how I'll do it I'll, gra I'll draw a box around all these corners and you probably can't see them but uh, there, there's like a little dot in each corner of this and there's one down here and, and, and these are basically the way it's applied to the maps these are, are vertices but they can be moved around so I can grab these and I can use the a little rotate arrow which is probably the most useful tool on here and I can grab these and I can just rotate it around let's see uh, hold, does it work if I hold the shift key down not really just get it just perfect there. There we go. Oh, there we go. Now, now as you can see, the number the number two is uh, is sort of uh, rotated there, and we've got a number two. And I, I I like that one, so I close this up. I click save. Oh, I don't need to click save. Anyway, so there we go. Now I've got my cube, and I've learned how to uh, map different textures to different sides. Remember to make sure you give that third one a name. I don't think I ever named it because that'll be confusing. Uh, this is number three. There we go. That's three. All right, and and my program kind of crashed a couple times while I was doing this, so I've got more textures here. When, okay, and so there we go. There is our fancy cube. We've sort of modeled well most of it anyway, uh, and we've got our textures on. And uh, once again, you'll need to add in a, a root node and your other LODs, those types of things, to make a their object out of it. But now you at least know a little bit more about texturing and the sort of things you can kind of do with it. Well, that about concludes our lesson on texturing for today. I'm Francis Seven, rep reporting, well, not so live, from the beautiful campus at the UOT. Uh, UOT, if you haven't signed up for any classes yet, uh, might want to do so. Uh, mine, for example. <laughs> Anyhow, I uh, hope you've uh, learned how to text your objects, and once again, you can play this video back. It's not like you can only see it the once, but remember, once you see it, it can't be unseen. <laughs> All right, Francis Seven, saying bye-bye for now.